Today I'm joined by Theo Boss. Theo is Triple Olympian 2004, 2008 and 2016. Yeah, correct. Correct. <laughs> Amongst the biggest achievements, silver medalist in the track cycling sprint 2004. Yeah. yeah. Five times world champion in the sprint, Kyrie, team sprint and so on. Uh, no team sprint, uh, kilo. Kilo. So sprint, so. Kairin and kilo. But five times world champion, four times runner-up at the world champs, and four times bronze medalist. Okay, that I didn't know. <laughs> if, if Wikipedia is updated, yeah, yeah. <laughs> these yeah. are the numbers. Yeah. Theo made a transition to road cycling in 2009 and returned to track cycling after seven years in 2015-2016. Yeah. And he was now preparing for the fourth Olympic Games in Tokyo 2020. Yeah. Welcome, Theo. Thank you. Theo, in your life as an athlete, what was your darkest moment? Uh, darkest moment? That's a good question. Uh, I never really had big major setbacks, but uh, uh, and sometimes as an uh, athlete you you have certain goals and sometimes you don't reach those goals, that's difficult. Um, but I think my last year as a road cyclist was uh, not a very nice year because I had uh, a lot of crashes uh, and also injuries because of those crashes and a lot of difficulties because, uh, because of those crashes and a uh, uh, problem with my shoulder. I had two surgeries that season. Uh, yeah, come back, then crash again. So yeah, it was uh, yeah, no no victories that season. So it was really difficult. Sounds like a BMX racer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was not fun. And uh, I had, uh, I joined a new team, MTM Quebec, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I really motivated all winter. I had a really good winter. Uh, numbers were really good. Good uh, good power on the bike, and uh, already yeah, the first races. The first race of the year I crashed and then uh, that was in Mallorca and then Qatar I crashed really hard and I had some yeah, cuts in my knee and in my elbow hmm. um, and also that was I can I could have I could come back but when you crash really hard you become also a little bit afraid of crashing again hmm. especially when you have stitches in your knee yeah, yeah you're afraid to just have an easy, easy tumble and then it, it, it pops open again. Mm -hmm. um, so you get a little bit afraid in the peloton and uh, that's also never good because then you are in the back of the peloton because you're braking earlier than the rest and in the back of the peloton is yeah that's the most dangerous part of the peloton. Uh, then yeah you see the most crashes there and uh, yeah. it's better to be in front. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that was a hard year, yeah. And what did you learn in that time? What did you learn from that dark moment? Um, I learned that, uh, that I really liked cycling because... Uh, um, and as a, not as a sport, but just to do. So, sometimes you don't, at that moment, you don't really like to go to a race. But it's really nice to just ride your bike and uh, don't think about the race. Mm -hmm. And that's what you do then. So yeah, you forget about the race and uh, you don't want to push yourself too hard to come back again. So it's better just to enjoy riding your bike and enjoy your life as an athlete. Mm -hmm. And that I always had. So uh, uh, yeah, for me it was really relaxing to go on the bike for training. Yeah. And if you, if you do that uh, for a certain time, uh, after a while you start thinking about racing again. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's easy to come back. Yeah. But uh, always when, yeah, when you had a major setback, it's just, yeah, okay, you are uh, a little bit depressed. Yeah. But uh, always uh, going on the bike was the medicine yeah. to feel better again. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that when we started training in Alkmaar prior to the Olympics, I yeah. could see you always had your bike with you and even in between sets you 
was cycling your bike, I, I could really see like this guy not cycling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I also think that's a good method as a track rider to do that between sometimes uh, mm -hmm. sets or whatever, or sessions uh, on the, uh, or intervals on the track. Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's a good, uh, I think it's nice to that you are a cyclist, that you also like to ride your bike. Yeah. 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 Okay, good. There's another thing I wanted to touch on. Um, you were world champion in the sprint in 2007, right? 2008 at the World Champs, you had a very close race with Chris Hoy. Yeah. And uh, René Wolf told me there were three of the best races he has ever seen in track cycling. Yeah. <laughs> so you were very close with the later winner. Yeah. He went into the Olympics 2008 as a, one of the favorites. Yeah. And then? So, uh, yeah, I went to, to Beijing, uh, but I got beaten uh, at the World Championships before those Olympics. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I had won the World Sprint title in 2004. Mm -hmm. Then I lost it in 2005 by Rene. And then 2006 and 2007, I was world champion again. And then 2008, I lost. I lost in the quarterfinal against Hoy. Um, and then at that world championship, you saw the whole level was yeah, that it was really high level already. And um, I was also at my best level at that time. So yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, of course you you were a little bit shocked when when that happened. And then we went to Olympics, and um, yeah, my, my form was even a little bit less than that World Championships mm -hmm. a few months before. So yeah, I knew it was going to be difficult to make a gold medal. And also, um, I saw the level of the others because you look at each other a little bit in training. Uh, their level stepped up a little bit, mm -hmm. and yeah, I was. Uh, that Olympics not happy because I wanted to have a certain level. Uh, I wanted to ride 99, for example, mm -hmm. but I, I I knew I, I couldn't reach that time. And um, then I had a Kirin, uh, which was uh, if you won, which was a good event for me to make a medal or to to win. But I knew sprint was going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Kirin. Uh, I was I crashed in the semi-final because a uh, other rider, a uh, Polish rider in front of me, he fell down, and uh, yeah, I fell over him, mm. and then race was already over. Yeah. So uh, I couldn't, yeah, even try to get in the final. I just was just finished, mm. and then was only sprint left, mm. which I knew yeah, I didn't have quite the horsepower or the speed for for that to make a gold medal. Mm. And then I lost in the quarterfinal against uh, Bukan. Mm. So, yeah. So that uh, I had no medals at that Olympics. So that was uh, not really nice. How did you recover from that? Um, I did one more uh, track race uh, that year. Uh, was European Championships Sprint Omnium. Mm. And, uh, but already before Olympics in Beijing or around Olympics, I already more or less decided to to try to go on the road, mm. and uh, I already have talks with uh, uh, with the road team of Rabobank, mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah, that was uh, I had a yeah I quit basically then with track cycling, track sprinting, mm. and then I uh, yeah looked for a new goal. Yeah in my career and uh, yeah, I started road cycling and uh, as a kid I also started as a road cyclist so when I started cycling I was nine years old I was more of a road cyclist and then so that was in 1994, 1993 and then I continued on the road until juniors and then in, when in two, around 2000, Olympics 2000 I saw on TV track cycling I said, okay, yeah, maybe I'm going to try it. And uh, so I tried and uh, it went really well. So you started 2000 and 2004 you yeah. became super medalist. Yeah, yeah. So in 2000 I did only one race big. I, I'm basically two big track races on the track. 
I was nationals, and then I did world championships juniors, and uh, um, yeah, for the rest I rolled on the road. So I I, I didn't do any gym work or whatever. Uh, I was just a road rider. Also, I did I went, at junior worlds. I did team pursuit <laughs> as well. So I was selected for team pursuit. Yeah, and uh, because uh, in training one rider crashed and broke his collarbone. There was some switches in the team and I could, was able to ride a kilometer also. So <laughs> I was lucky and then I did a pretty good result uh, in a kilometer. And uh, yeah, from then on I thought, shit, next year I'm gonna try to become junior world champion in kilometer. Mm. And that happened in 2001. And, uh, and then, yeah, 2003, two, 2003, I yeah, became better and better in kilo. And then in 2004, I became uh, third at the world's seniors at kilo. And suddenly I became world champion sprint. <laughs> so I was more of a kilo rider yeah. when I was young. And you still are. I'm still are, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, but yeah, I was also quite good in sprint. Mm. And I never really expected that. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What was your best moment? Yeah, also that uh, I don't cannot really pick one uh, good moment. Uh, yeah, there are several really nice moments in my in my life. But uh, if if I if you say uh, five times world champion, I think the first one is the most mm. the nicest world title I had. That yeah. was two thousand four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Prior to winning. Yeah, I think I felt the most happy with that world title. Mm. Uh, yeah, then uh, more happy than the other ones. Because it was unexpected, or you had to. Yeah, uh, unexpected, but suddenly your world champion sprint, you know, you never really. Yeah, you dream about it, but uh, yeah, you never really believe it. And uh, yeah, it made me really proud. And mm. uh, also, my brother was world champion speed skating sprint. And uh, yeah, I was, I was really proud. I I achieved the same he did okay. in another sport. Yeah. And what did you learn from that moment, or how has it influenced your life? Um, yeah, that uh, anything can happen. You know that if you just train hard and just live for your sport and do every, try to get the maximum out of yourself, you suddenly. It suddenly can happen, you know, mm. and uh, suddenly you're there because you're for. It looks like I was really quickly at the top, but still, it's three years. You're looking three world championships. I was beaten by faster guys, you know. Yeah. So you're always looking up and fighting them and trying to to beat them, but suddenly, yeah, you beat them at the right moment. Mm. So yeah, it can happen. That's about. Well. <laughs> last last <laughs> level over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, if you could go back in time, 10 or 15 years, what advice would you give to young people? Uh, that I uh, must be more. Uh, uh, try to get more balance in my life, training wise. Like, I was. Uh, always pushing myself too much, I think, in training. Mm -hmm. Not always, but sometimes at crucial moments. That I think what happened before Beijing Olympics. So after that World Championships, I had a rest period and then I st we started working really hard again. And uh, yeah, if I look back now if in my training logbook, I think uh, that was too much. At a certain point, I had really good condition, but uh, I pushed through too much and then I went, I got fatigued and I pushed through the fatigue and that wasn't good I think. A bit of an overreaching, over Yeah, things. yeah. And uh, now I'm much more balanced and also I see the benefit of taking an extra rest day or something or, yeah. you know, I'm not afraid of, of doing that anymore. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, I would give myself that advice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Taking a note here, you already mentioned your older brother. Your older brother was a successful speed skater, right? Two times world champion, yeah. 
multiple medals at the World Champs, silver medalist at two different Olympics. Yeah. How has that influenced your career as an athlete? Because you see your older brother, I think he's seven, eight years older than yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that, I think it's because of uh, him that I became, uh, that I made a, a medal in Athens. Because uh, at that age, I think. Uh, because, yeah, I saw him going to Nagano Olympics. And also that year he became world champion sprint. Mm. And uh, he had also quite interesting build up to that uh, moment. He was also, an, yeah, he was like an endurance skater mm. before and then, yeah, they decided he must be a sprinter. And uh, so, yeah, he had also every year, he got closer and closer to the top. And, uh, and suddenly also he became world champion and, uh, and made a medal at the Olympics. Mm. And uh, yeah, if we, yeah, we lived together until maybe 2001 or something, or 2000. And uh, yeah, I, when I was young, uh, 10 years old, uh, I see him uh, already with the national team going to training camp and uh, yeah, going to bed early. You see what he eats, uh, you see how he trains, uh, everything you see <laughs> close by as an example. Mm. And also he gives, I, I had a passion for cycling and he, he also. So yeah, he also, gave me advice what to do and we go training together and uh, hmm. yeah, stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I got a lot of advice from him for when I was really young already hmm. and that would help me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And also did it help you to believe that you can be very good because you saw him? At yeah, 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 yeah. I thought uh, I must have good genes because uh, he, he, uh, he has them. So. <laughs> And uh, yeah. parents must have good genes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't do any sport. They didn't do any professional sport or whatever. But uh, yeah, and also when you go training together, and I always knew I was fast as a sprinter on the on the road bike. Uh, yeah, and uh, and we had like my brother. He he prepared my bike and everything, and uh, um, he had a little gym uh, at home. So. Uh, all that stuff really helped me, and yeah, I think. Why do you think you were successful in this sport? Mm, yeah, of course, I think you must be a little bit lucky with the genes you get from your parents. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty explosive. I have good, uh, good endurance as well. Um, and I think also, uh, yeah, the love for the sport and love for training helped me a lot. Mm. Yeah, because I think my brother he maybe have uh, he, he maybe has more talent than me for riding a bike or for speed skating. Um, but I'm I'm a little bit more uh, how do you say training animal. Mm. Yeah, I, I like training more than than he did. So uh, that's why I think it's balanced out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think I love training and uh, I love the sport and I love everything about the sport. And that, that helps a lot, I mm. think. Do you have a morning routine? How do you get ready for the day? Uh, morning routine is, uh, yeah, I need coffee. I need uh, water, glass of water. And then, uh, yeah, there are periods I, I eat only oatmeal. There are periods I only eat uh, rye bread with uh, three uh, eggs. Um, there's sometimes I eat just bread with peanut butter. <laughs> um, but uh, what I like the most is, uh, is the oatmeal and uh, coffee. Mm. And uh, that's it. And then just... Uh, yeah, start the, uh, you already know what you're going to train. Mm. So look at the program and, uh, and do your training. And then, uh, yeah, normally I start training at around uh, 10 o'clock or something. Mm. And then if the morning session is finished uh, around 12 o'clock, have a good lunch. Um, and then, uh, yeah, what I really need is a power nap. Mm. So, uh, when I'm at home, I'm always ever every day. I take a 20 minute power nap, mm. and it always lasts exactly 20 minutes. 
then I wake up. You time it or you wake up by yourself? I have a sleep app. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's always. Uh, I always wake up. Yeah, before the end of, or something. It's almost yeah, 20 minutes. Hmm. It's uh, exactly. So that's really funny. And uh, after that, uh, yeah, wake up again, and then uh, it's like a new day. You feel. <laughs> I feel always much better. Yeah. And then I eat a little snack again, and then do most of the time second day, uh, second training, afternoon session. Yeah. Uh, so if yeah, if I have gym and road, for example, at one day I do in the morning I do gym, uh, and then afternoon I do road cycling. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then the evening, uh, yeah, uh, around seven o'clock, eight o'clock, I have dinner, and then uh, yeah, relax in the evening, and the next day again. How many hours of sleep do you get? I need uh, a minimum eight hours, mm-hmm. eight and a half hours. Yeah. yeah. If I have less than eight hours, I need to catch up the next day or later in the week. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I feel it. Uh, I feel it the rest of the day. Yeah, I can yeah. relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think uh, sleep is really, really important for mm-hmm. for us, for an athlete. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I always feel if I don't get enough sleep, uh, yeah, I, I train for nothing. Mm. I don't feel my body is recovering or costs too much energy. Yeah. You're just breaking down, I think. Mm. Yeah. Okay. How do you prepare for important moments? Um, you mean mentally? Or, yeah. Like now we have World Championships in one month. And uh, what I always really like is that uh, uh, to look back what I did in the same period before World Championships, what I did now, and uh, what training did I do, and uh, what power did I put out, and uh, um, yeah, how was my build up? And then I always try to yeah to 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 copy that a little bit, and um, and always try to improve that a little bit. So I knew I know if I have yeah certain numbers in endurance, certain numbers in uh, 30 second power, for example, uh, if I can do a squat with a certain speed, or if I can do a power clean a certain weight, I know this is you know it's almost mathematic. Yeah. Then I can do this time on kilo, for example, mm. and uh, this is a little bit what I yeah I'm looking up and my how you say. Uh, I'm holding on to that, mm. and if the numbers are good, I also feel good in the head, yeah. and I feel yeah, uh, secure and, and sure that I can do it. Mm. And um, yeah, then yeah, always when you think about okay, I have uh, world championships in three, four weeks, a kilo. You think about the kilo. You think about yourself standing in the start gate, and then uh, yeah visualize the whole race, you know, and uh, that also always really helps me. Mm. Yeah, just okay, the first 60 meters, uh, I'm gonna do that, and then half lap, I'm gonna do that. Mm. Get back in the, on the bike, in the drops, uh, one lap, accelerate more, yeah, stuff mm. like that. Yeah. Okay, and the visualization that happens, or you take deliberate time for it? Um, yeah, when I'm closer to the race, I take time for it. And think about the race, yeah. Um, and I think I think it's really important to prepare. Yeah. And also, yeah. Sometimes you are, if you are before the race, you get a little bit afraid or anxious. But uh, yeah, you, as an athlete, you, you at one moment, uh, yeah, you just have to stand there, and you just have to do it, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's also yeah. That's the nice thing about sport. Uh, it's re- yeah, really scary sometimes, but when it's finished and you have a good result, it's the best feeling you can ever have. Hmm. And um, yeah. How do you overcome the fear? Uh, at, at just one moment, you just have to face the music. <laughs> you just have to do it, hmm. and uh, and and just also, it's almost autopilot. Mm-hmm. So you just go there, you sit in the machine, uh, if you do a kilo, and 
and then it's just you know pushing on pedals <laughs> and if you, you you have to just produce the watts and then uh, get an arrow and then it goes automatically almost hmm. yeah okay and then i wanted to come back to that point you said you have all the numbers in your head endurance speed strength what whatsoever yeah and if the numbers are good you have a good feeling yeah what do you do if the numbers are not good um yeah that happens also sometimes and uh yeah that uh, you have to work with that with those numbers and uh, also then you have to be the best you can be so uh, it's nice to have good numbers and most of the time uh, the numbers are good enough and that everything worked out well like the whole periodiz periodization would work out well and uh, yeah that's a very good feeling but yeah also sometimes uh, um, it's not good and then it's uh, you have to be still you have to be strong in the head and give 100% at the race and uh, don't don't look too much at it you know mm. still it's very important but still you can also win a, a, a race when you're not at 100% yeah yeah and then you say strong in the head i need to dig into that strong in the head how do you make sure that the negative thoughts are not taking over that you maintain strength yeah that happens uh, also sometimes that you are uh, just thinking yeah shit i trained to uh, for nothing or what did i do wrong uh, it's not going well still you have hope every day it becomes better your condition mm -hmm. but yeah it doesn't come uh, it doesn't come you know yeah. and uh, yeah, then you have to uh, get 100 out of out of the legs still you know don't then it's also a mental game like uh, Yeah, how can I explain it? Because sometimes it, it's easy to say, okay, yeah, you know, I just give up. Uh, yeah. I, he can beat me and then I'm out, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, you must not do that. You must always fight. Yeah. yeah. Even if it's not 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as a track cyclist, that doesn't happen that often. But on the road, for example, that happens a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah, because there are a lot of times. Um, Uh, you're not in a peak condition, but also there are stages that doesn't suit you really well, mm. and uh, you still have to, uh, yeah, finish the race or survive this climb, and then you can sprint for the victory. Mm. So yeah, it's a little bit different on the road, but uh, yeah, on track, most of the time uh, you get at a certain level you want. Yeah. Mm. How do you overcome setbacks when things don't go your way? Uh, yeah, when you have setbacks, um, yeah, like I said also earlier in the interview, it's just um, making new plans. But first of all, just I just get back on the bike as a as a medicine, you know, just enjoy riding my bike and go for a coffee ride or so, something with friends mm. and then uh, yeah go out go out there and uh, because after a setback you also because you focus so much on a on a race and only this race exists in your world mm. and if you fail there yeah the whole world collapses but the next day also the sun just goes up you know mm. and uh, The world keeps turning, and uh, yeah, everything is uh, normal uh, again the next day. So uh, yeah, then you, I get back on the bike, and then uh, yeah, you have certain people around you that help you uh, plan to, towards the race. Um, you make new goals, and you make a new plan, and then uh, at one point uh, you follow the plan, and you start having a good feeling again, mm. and then you start getting yeah, hope again that you have, will perform well mm. and uh, and yeah and then that happens you know then you perform well and then yeah but also yeah it goes up and then it goes down and then it goes mm. up and goes down yeah mm. who's your role model uh, role model mm. 
I don't really have a role model. I think uh, I never really had one. Um, of course, I think uh, yeah, my brother was a big example for me, and uh, uh, yeah, he helped me a lot of uh, times during my career. And uh, I think also when I was young, I really looked up to him, and I learned a lot from his career also. Yeah. yeah. So I think he was. Uh, I think he's the. Uh, yeah, a role model for me. Yeah, but never really. I didn't really have like, I I don't know, like Michael Johnson or something, or uh, John Olaf of course or something. That never really was. Uh, I never had that. No. You want to nominate someone to be interviewed? Uh, you mentioned the name Johan Olaf of course. He's already interviewed, but has responded to my email yet. So, Johan Olaf of course. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mark Teuter uh, nominated him. Ah, okay. I reached out to him, but he has not responded yet, so we need to have ah, someone else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe uh, another, uh, you, uh, another speed skater or someone from, from a short track team. You name it. Uh, maybe uh, Shinky. Shinky Knecht. If he's, still, if he's getting back uh, and he has the time, maybe it's nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. Nice. All right. Where can people find you? Uh, people find me online. Ah, online. People can find me on uh, Instagram uh, and uh, Twitter. Yeah. That's the main channels. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Or via Beat Cycling Club. Beat Cycling Club. Yeah. Okay. Beatcyclingclub.com. Yeah. Uh, dot uh, beatcycling dot club. Okay. Beatcycling yeah. dot club. Yeah. Thanks, Theo. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.